Hello everyone, it's Melanie. Um, I have another, what I'm going to call Christmas craft kind of thing that I wanted to share with you. And I did make a video of this previously, but it turned out it needed far more editing than I was willing to do because of some major interruptions. So I am going to re-record it and hopefully, um, having already done it once, I'll um, have a better... Um, I can show it to you a little better. So on Wednesday the 9th um, of December, I was looking for a book on my bookshelf of where I keep all my artsy books and stuff. And I came across this book, um, The Art of Decorative Paper Stencils by Ken Kanako, Kanako Yaguchi. Kanako Yaguchi. Okay. So I just, when I saw it, I flipped and I was like, oh, I have, I've never done any of that. So I must have bought this book. I'm thinking because of where the price sticker used to be, I'm thinking I bought it at Half Price Books. Um, and it may have been in the clearance section. There's one I tried to make that day too. Um, anyway, I bought it, but I don't remember ever looking at it. So I started flipping through it. And then of course, instantly I was like, oh, I have to try this. So I started playing with it. This was the first one I did um, out of the book, except I had to make mine crazier. And I did it on pattern paper, so you can't even appreciate it at all. So it led me down a path and I was cutting snowflakes like crazy. I've been doing snowflake, you know, not in the last two days, but for like three days in a row, that's all I was doing. So I'm going to consider it kind of a Christmas craft because you can do it with a six pointed star, which is like a snowflake. Um, but you can also, um, the, the ones in this book. Okay. So what I'm going to show you are there are the two ways that I have been folding them, um, folding the paper. And you always start with a square. I'm using origami paper because it's already square and it's nice and thin. So it needs to be thin in order to get um, this kind of detail. So let me show you. Hopefully I have everything together that I wanted to I even have a... Whoa, that's... Is that kind of straightish? Well, it's just going to have to be off. So in this book, which I did very few of, of these actual um, cutouts, this is a, a fourfold. So if you do a cutout, a kirigami piece, if you do a cutout in this fourfold, you're going to end up with something that's basically a square. It's going to have four, four sides. Um, this book is, is great. It's out of print. This is what really attracted me was the square because I had never seen like a snowflake shape um, done in an actual square. So this is what really intrigued me. And I here's where I've been keeping my cutouts so that they... So here's the one I did kind of based on that. Mine looks a little, mine looks a little different. Um, but these are, everything in this book is a four-fold. So let me show you the path that led me down. There's another. Um, so I've been storing them in here. That one looks like a Celtic cross or something maybe. This one is out of the book. And I think... That one is out of the book with um, a little extra decoration by me. So then this, this is also origami paper, um, little bitty ones. These are mine. These are, um, once I really uh, kind of got the hang of it, and that one I think is out of the book. Oh, I love that. I love that one. Oh, oh, look at this one. That one's so that it's like I did this one I guess I really liked it so I thought oh I got to do it and make it even more uh, complex because you can make it more and more intricate the more 
you know, the more cuts you make, the more cutting you do. And I found that storing them in a book like this, because when I laid them flat, um, they were getting all tangled, so I was just putting them in a book like this to keep them from, from getting all messed up. Oh, that one I love. So you can just go crazy with this, as you can see. Oh, I love this one too. Oh no, that piece is bent the wrong way. And you can get more and more intricate, which is fun. Oh, I'm loving that one. I love that one too. That's a piece of wood grain um, paper. <gasps> this one, I'm adore. Oh, I love it. They're, these are so fun. So these aren't technically snowflakes because they have four points. They're four pointed. Um, and a snowflake has six. This is one that there's, when you're cutting, you can act, if you're not really paying attention, I mean, you can cut and then you realize, oh, I just cut out what's going to make a huge, so that's why this has such big holes there. It wasn't supposed to. That's just um, because I wasn't really paying attention to how I cut. Okay, so these are all a four fold snow um, kirigami folded paper cut so then I googled it you know kirigami snowflakes and this is the one I found online so there's a YouTube video I don't know if I can find it now but there's a YouTube video for this one online and I made this one and <clears throat> excuse me, the one thing that I picked up in that video is the six fold. So that is a whole nother thing. So you can fold it four ways so you get four points or you can fold it six so you get six points. So then it's like an actual snowflake because it's got six points and snowflakes have six, six points. So then I went down that path, which is even more fun. And here are some of my, this one I love. And I think I actually love it so much because of the color. So these are totally fun. That one's. And you can just keep going and going. And so what do you do with them? Well, I mean, the challenge is because they need to be, the paper needs to be really thin to be able to cut something intricate. Um, and so they don't, they don't really stand up on their own. And I guess I already took my starch back to the other room, but I have my iron here next to me and I've been ironing them after I cut them. And I had even starched quite a few of these, put starch on them. But they're still, because they're origami paper, they're still pretty floppy. Um, so these are the kind, these are the six pointed. And let me see, there's, there's some that I actually, I kind of resisted because you can find some patterns online. Um, and I'll see if I can link down to, oh, one that I discovered after I was doing this, um, which is a cornucopia of options, is um, called Dave's Snowflakes, and I'll link to it too. Um, but once I started playing with it, so this, I tried it out of, this is parchment tracing parchment paper, um, the kind you use in drafting, not the kind you bake with, but um, it's some vintage parchment that I have. This is, of course, I'm doing my own, trying to make these up as I go, and that's how I cut this, accidentally cut that apart. So this one is really thin. I mean, it doesn't hold up on its own. Um, I did put some starch on it, though. So that one I tried, because I was thinking I wanted to do something larger, but I didn't have, um, I don't have a lot of 
super thin paper that's that's larger. So that one. Then this is a piece of mulberry paper. Um, also extremely thin. I mean, it's like light as air. Um, so there's, there's that one on mulberry paper. And then because, you know, I have to have some kind of challenge, those don't really, those are hard to store. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. I did this. And this is a piece of tissue paper. So this is like actual wrap your gift um, tissue paper. And I love how it turned out, but look how, I mean, it's just a floppy mess. So I'm not sure, not sure what I might do with it. Um, but I really like it. I mean, I could obviously glue it down on something, but the only problem with that is then um, you kind of lose the fact that it's um, made out of tissue paper, you know, and it's so tiny and thin. And speaking of losing the, I'm just gonna show you this. So this is, um, this is, what is this? Oh. That, I was just comparing like paper that's a little thicker. This is office paper, I think. And it, they just look awful when you're not cutting them out of some thinner paper. Now I can't remember what paper this is because I don't think it's deli. Oh, this must be, this is full sheets of that um, tracing paper that I have, that vintage parchment tracing paper. And I just painted, um, I painted three pieces of it, or maybe it's one piece and I cut it up. So I painted those and then I made this one, um, which I cut out of, you know, out of this. And I decided to glue it down. So I glued it onto this piece of um, watercolor paper. But once I got it glued down, and the fact that you can see that I had painted, you know, that's a piece of, of this. So you can see the paint strokes and stuff on it. Once I got it on here, now to me, it just looks like someone painted that on there with a stencil. You kind of lose the fact that it was actually paper cut and not stenciled on. But what I wanted to do with this one, and I think I still will do, is I'm going to go in and cut, um, I started doing it here, I'm going to cut other pieces and put them inside and decorate, you know, decorate this. So just some ideas. Now I'll show you how I've been cutting these. So let's start with the four fold. Now, when you, this is the one that's gonna give you um, a four pointed or a, something with four corners. Um, I'm gonna use this origami paper. This particular origami paper is single sided um, with really colorful colors on one side, but I've been folding it in because the scissors, because this is printed, it's not the actual paper color, this is just printed. So when you cut into it, if you overcut or um, anything like that, the white core of the paper will show through. I don't know if you can see. Can you see like right in here? See the little white spots? That's because this is actually a white piece of paper. Oh, there's one, there's the one. There's one of the ones I drew a pattern on um, and didn't even cut out the pattern I drew, I see. So I've been folding um, the colored part to the inside since it's printed because I get less of this, um, the white core kind of showing. So be patient with me here because I, I used to do a lot of origami and now I can't remember what the names of these particular folds are, but I'm gonna start with a square piece of paper Turn it on the diagonal and we're going to fold it in half diagonally to make a triangle. And the more careful you are with your folds, um, the more symmetrical your snowflake will be. 
So you fold it. Here we go. So this is the first fold. Fold it in half diagonally. And then you're going to fold this in half diagonally this way. So now you have four layers of paper. Match up your corners. I like using my bone folder. Make sure that it's pressed down. So on the four fold, then you're going to unfold it. And you're going to take each of these outside corners and fold them up to this top point. So the fold is it's going to go right there. These are going to match up with that center line that you created when you folded. Like I said, the, the, the better your folds, the more uh, symmetrical your snowflake will be. And the other thing I'm having issue with is that when you're cutting multiple layers of paper, you know, the scissors, when you cut into the paper, the scissors want to, the blades want to push the paper away and the thicker cutting, the harder, the more it wants to do that, the more the scissors want to push it away. And when it does that, it, it kind of angles the cut so that you end up with these, I'll, I'll show you. But, um, okay, so then we folded the two outside corners up to the point, and then we're gonna pick this thing up so it's smooth on the back, and it's got the two flaps on the front. We're gonna fold it together behind itself. So on the flat side, fold those two points together. And line that up. So this is a four fold, and what you're doing here is cutting through eight pieces of paper. So this is eight, a four fold is eight layers of paper. And the side that is gonna be, um, if you can just to remember what your, um, if you're just doing them like I was and just kind of cutting them out, you know, without, without a, a design. Um, we we'll use this one. Oh, see, now they're all tangled again because I didn't put them back in the book. So like this. So we can keep this here. So this fold is this piece right here. That's where it's going to end. That's the part of the paper that that's going to end up on. So you'll have one side's going to have two clean folds here, and then this side is going to have these three. So just remember that the side with two folds is going to be the, that's your X, Y axis um, across the middle. So what I've been doing on, and if you just want to cut them just to play, here's what I'm doing. So the first thing I've been cutting is sort of, let's just do one without, um, without too much thinking. Um, I've been cutting this top edge first and kind of shaping it based on Let's see. And as far as scissors go, oh my, I've been trying everything. Um, these are the ones that are working for me the best. I love these. These are the Tim Holtz scissors, but they're serrated. And the serrated edge grips the paper better when you cut. It doesn't push it out of the way as much, but it, you can see that serrated edge on the paper. Um, then I've got some more. These I use for fussy cutting, and um, these are from Daiso, and they work okay. They're not they're not comfortable. I'd love to have a pair of scissors like with a handle this big that's comfortable, but with just a smooth smooth blade. So when you're cutting, just remember you have to leave some connection points on both of these folded sides. Um, so like if I cut, if I cut here and cut that out, I cut across both folds, then I just cut a hole in the middle of my 
of my piece here. Oh, where's my scrap bag? Let me show you. And if you save your your scraps, ooh, you end up with some really cool pieces to play with. So I've been keeping all my scraps in this little bin and I thought, oh, it looks, it just looks so fun. There's even some failed, failed cuts in there. Oh my goodness, you're probably, okay, so here we go. So when I've been cutting, because this is my the, the side with two folds is my, you know, X, Y axis. I've been holding it with that pointed, you know, up and down away from me so that um, I know that's where that uh, axis is. So remember to leave um, some space on, on both sides. Let's just cut another swoop. And I don't know if I should zoom in or see how, okay, see how when I cut it's, the paper shifts. Um, the other, I had tried using clips on here, hold it in place while I, while I cut. Um, let's see. I guess this one's just going to be a bunch of curly cues. Although I made that really sharp point up at the top, so I probably need to um, make another sharp point somewhere to match that because I've got curves everywhere. And then, and let me zoom in just a tiny bit. See if I can. nails look terrible. I painted them because they look so bad. Um, but let's see. I apologize for the condition of my nails. Let's put some more sharp points in here. So I'll show you next, I'll show you the way I was, the six fold. Now the six fold, which makes an actual, you know, six-pointed snowflake. Um, the tricky thing with it, you know, with this, you're cutting through four layers of, or eight layers of paper. With the other one, the six-fold, you're actually cutting through 12 layers of paper. That's, it, that's why it gets a little, um, it gets a little trickier. It's just, so you can, I, this is how I was doing them all until I decide until I decided oh I'm gonna actually draw it out and if you look online I haven't done I haven't done any because I think it's more fun to kind of make them up but I do I have done quite a few that you know I didn't um, they came apart or you know they didn't work exactly right so then I started drawing them out, and that's when I discovered, oh, if I actually draw out the pattern on the snowflake, then I can get something that's much more intricate uh, if I plan ahead. So you can see here, you know, I've cut through this side there, there, here. So I could still, as long as I leave some connection point on both of these sides, you know, I could still keep cutting. Um, let's put a little, ooh, can you tell what I did there? I think for some reason when I make a video, I feel like I am, um, I'm always in a hurry. Like I need to, I need to, you know, I may have totally messed that up, cut too far. Um, I always feel like I'm in a hurry when I make a video. I don't know why. Yeah, I may have cut that too far. Well, we'll unfold this one so I don't mess it up anymore. So this will be our first. I just can't resist, though, putting another... Putting another something in there. Okay, 
So let's unfold this one and see what we end up with. Let me turn the iron back on. So not bad. So that's a four fold. And then I'm going to, let me move my, my iron. I had to turn it back on so it's not completely hot. But let me move my little iron here. This is parchment paper um, from the kitchen, the baking kind. So it has a silicone um, coating on it. I tried using deli paper on it to, to just flatten them out and the deli paper didn't like to be ironed um, as much as, as this does. So, you know, the more you plan this out, the more intricate it can, they can be. And um, but anyway, that's the fourfold. So I'm going to show you that. I'll put, put that in the pile. So let me show you the six fold, which is a little more, it's a little trickier, but the end product is just, is so pretty, so fantastic. So let's see, let me get a six fold out here. Or where did I put them? I've already lost them. Let's see, here's some sixes. Okay, so a six. Let me get a different piece of paper because that one's the same color. Let's do a pink. So this paper I have is double-sided and it is actually just printed. It's still a white, the paper core on this is still uh, white. So if you make, you know, extra cuts or so, you'll still see white um, through it. So the six fold starts the same way as the four. Um, you're going to fold your paper in half diagonally or in half to make a triangle. Press that and you're going to fold it in half again to make that triangle even smaller. So this is in quarters at this point. Make sure your creases are... But with this one then you're going to unfold it and to do the six fold it has to be a 60 degree angle that you're working with. Um, I have a protractor. There we go. So there's a 60 degree angle right there. So if I match that up, and you could, you know, you could, I mean, I guess you could mark this if you were more. Um, math knowledgeable than I am, but here's the way I've been doing it. So it, they need to, the next two folds will have to terminate right here in the center of this. So hold that down on the center right there. That's what I've been doing. And then fold it up about where you think, you know, okay, it's going to be about there. And then don't press it down and fold this side up the same way. And then I have kind of this cup shape and I sort of move it together until it's it's even. Cuz you're this you're you're basically folding it in thirds. So then kind of put some creases in there and then when you after you've got those creases in there, you're going to unfold it because one of these flaps you're going to fold behind. So I'm going to fold this one back behind. like that. And then this one on this side, I'm going to fold across like that. So you're, you should have fold two folds on each side and your, your half square is divided into three, um, three angles. So the next thing you'll do is you're going to fold this this looks like a goat head or something. You're going to fold this in half. And it's that starts getting a little trickier too because now you're dealing with 12 pieces of paper, you know, 12 layers of paper. So try and get it as as straight as you can. Oh, see I didn't 
do a very good job there. But most of those have been like this, so, and they work, they work. I like them anyway. So once you get to this stage, Let's show, I'm gonna show you this one one more time. This is the six fold. So you're starting with the square. You're gonna fold it into a triangle. Then you're gonna fold that triangle into another triangle, making your uh, center crease there. Unfold it. This is the part where we kind of guessed at how to fold that into thirds based on the fact that we know what we need is a I don't need that thing, a 60 degree angle. So there's our there's our 60 degrees. And you could use something to, to help you see where it is. So once you've done that and you press those in place, one to the front, one to the back, then you end up with this kind of goat head looking thing. And you're gonna fold that whole thing in half. So that's gonna, give you this. Now, if you if you'll look at this, it's going to have a straight piece, a straight cut right here on this side, and it's angled on this side. You're going to, on this side, you're going to take your big scissors and cut that, cut that off across right on that straight line. So now this is what you're going to make your snowflake out of. And You've got one, two, three, four pieces, four folds on the inside, and then just one fold here. Am I doing this right? Because some, something seems weird. So this, like I said, you're, you've got 12, 12 layers of paper there. So you just have to um, it, it's trickier to cut. It's, I guess what I'm trying to say. I tried cutting with uh, some of these other scissors and let's make this one like a kind of a, well, it's awful, like a flower-ish kind of shape. Okay, well, it has some kind of a weird, oh, there's, can you see the double-sided paper? It has a white core, so you still see that. And you can, if you're cutting and you're like, oh, what is that gonna look like? You can, you know, unfold it and see what it's looking like and then just fold it back up. And from unfolding that, I think I want this to have a little cut out there like that and let's put a heart right here here I'm gonna do this kind of quickly because like I was saying I don't know why but I always feel like I'm I need to hurry when I'm on a video Another cut that I've discovered that I really like is if you go in and then, you know, do like right angle or you can do some really complicated, you know, like here's a stair step of a, a kind of cut like that and then, and then curve that around or whatever you're gonna do. And then come all the way back up so you end up with these cuts that are kind of, have a right angle cut out of them. I like those because they look really neat when you, when you unfold them, you get, oh, look at, oh. <gasps> okay, that is terrifying. Look at it. It's even got ears and flames on its head. Oh, that looks evil. Ooh, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Okay, well, let's keep going. See if we can make him less evil, because that is evil looking.
very evil looking. Ooh. like doing these half circle shapes but they're tricky because these scissors don't want to you know so they they never end up the same size is what I guess I'm trying to say we'll just put two and then we'll go we'll put a little cut out here these cut a little better, so if I get one of these that doesn't want to cut all the way, I'll get a different pair of scissors to clean it up. You can also clean it up a bit after you've unfolded it. Um, some of them I even used a straight edge on after I unfolded it. Okay, I'm sorry y'all, I'm gonna have to put my head where I can actually see what I'm doing. Ooh, I did not wanna come loose. Okay, and then I'll show you this, which I was in here doing it, doing this cutting thing, and then I thought, <gasps> ooh, I can punch holes, so. These are the punches that I was using. This one's just a tiny little, oh, it's a 1 8 inch circle hole dot. So I can, I have to be careful because it, it doesn't wanna, let's see. So this will have 12 circles going around there. So I don't know if it, that's kind of a cheater cheater way to do it. This one is a, um, just a not a little, um, notch or split or whatever you want to call it. So I can put just something different. I mean, you could do, you could do a lot with, with punches even, unless you think that's cheating because it might be, might be cheating. I think I want one. Oh, look at that face. I think I want to put some circles down the center of this. Maybe it won't look as much like a nose. I don't know. Put one more. Okay, now I'm kind of going punch crazy. Okay, let me take it. Let's take it up, unfold it, see what it looks like. Oh, I can't get over how that wicked face. Hopefully it doesn't look like a wicked face. Well, it's not too bad. It's not, I'm not getting too much of a wicked face vibe. So let me press this one. And I already took my starch back to the other room, to the sewing room. But it's just, I was just using faultless spray starch, the kind you use on your clothes and just doing a light mist over the top of it. So that is a six, six pointed or six fold um, snowflake. So I'm gonna show you one more thing and then I'm gonna do a six fold again. Fold it up into a triangle. Fold that in half again to a smaller triangle. So you've got quarters. And then this is the one where we're gonna do the 60 degree angle. So. I'm just gonna fold that one up about where I think it's gonna go and then fold this one on top of it. 
until I think they are even, or they're as even as I can get them. About there. So I just crease it very lightly, and then because one of these flaps, remember we're gonna fold it all the way around behind us, behind that. So that one will go here, and then this one, and this, I see I'm off on this one too, but that one goes there. And then from here, we're gonna fold this, it doesn't matter which side you're on, but from here, we're gonna fold this whole thing in half, again, this way. Like that. Ooh, I'm way off on this one. Yeah, I am, I'm really off. Okay, it'll be fine. So once you get to this point then, remember you're gonna find that straight side, the, the edge, that the side that has the straight edge and you're gonna cut, cut right along that line and cut those tips off. So what you can do with, um, if you actually, if you want to plan it out a little better, is draw your pattern on um, onto your snowflake. And you can see where I did that. I just had one. Where did it go? Oh, I love this one. Oh, there's one. Okay, so that one you can see how I drew that one out. And then here's another one that I actually drew out what I wanted to cut. If we want the, let's say we want it to be, what kind of shape do we want on the outside? Um, or on the tips of the snowflake. Let's try to make one that's actually snowflakey looking. I want it to come something to extend out on here. So say it goes like this and then so that's on the end or it could just well that's on the end So it would be like projected off of the end of the snowflake. Something else you can do when you're, if you're sketching these out is just, I, some of them I kind of drew a line just on the edge right here to help myself remember that I have to leave some attachment points on both sides. So like that, let's say it has cut out like that and then on this side so what's that going to do that's going to come up and wrap around so this side is going to be what's down here in this dip in the dip so let's do an <clears throat> oh something's getting my throat <clears> throat> let's do another kind of dip down piece there so it kind of matches that one and then we need something to go up in here and if it helps you the other thing you can do is you can either shade the part that you're going to keep to kind of help you remember you know see okay this is what it's going to look like that's the part i'm going to keep and then the white part i'm going to cut away it's probably confusing looking, but okay, so like that, that will be, so the white part's going to be cut away. So we need to keep, um, let's go, say, let's come in at an angle here. And then, I don't know if I can, no, I'll just do a, we'll just do it. I was thinking I could do a heart there, but 
that might be too ambitious. I'll just do that. So that, I don't usually fill in the, that's confusing me already, filling that in. If I fill it in, I usually fill, fill in the part that I'm going to cut away. So that, I have, I have to erase that because that's confusing me. So this, this is what's going to stay. So we've got that one. And what do we want in the middle? Let's do, oops, let's do a little something like that. See how it looks in the center. And we'll echo this shape. So we'll put another one of those like right here, like that. That will stay. And then, well, we'll just do this. I'll just keep echoing that same, that same pattern. So that will come out. And we'll put another, a little curve in there, like that. So I've been kind of drawing it on, but I was cutting, I was high, or filling in, let me get, I was filling in the part that, that's gonna be cut away. So if that helps you, um, And actually that, that will get cut away. So this part will be cut away, that won't. So I can't wait, okay, so the site that I found called Dave's Snowflakes, and I'll put the link down below. I haven't used it yet, but he has hundreds and hundreds of printouts of snowflakes that you would print and then, um, yeah, that's not gonna work. You would print and then cut out from on his pattern. But I think you could use those patterns um, just like this, you know? So all of that is gonna come out. And the white part is going to stay. Okay, kind of. We'll see. Let me see what I get here. Mm. I've heard other YouTubers mention it, but you know, there's something about turning on the camera and and it just, it's it makes, it feels different. You just feel a pressure that you, that you don't feel otherwise if you're just working on something, you know, that you're not, oh, I felt that. Well, 
I'm blaming that on the camera, the pressure from the camera. Okay, we're gonna stop right there because I tore that apart. But if you take your time and don't rush like I'm doing, then you can sketch it out and get something uh, fairly intricate that's interesting looking. Turn the iron back on. Oh yeah, I cut it apart. <sighs> yeah, this one's sloppy. Doesn't even match the others that I've done. But this is what happens if you don't take your time. So take your time and if you want to have, you know, really pretty intricate snowflakes. There we go. So this would be a good one to glue down onto another piece of paper because I cut through and those points, some points, but it's very fun. So I would make, maybe I'd make another, um, make another one of these and try to, um, now that I know where I would cut, you know, what I would do, I could try making another one and not um, cut through, you know, take my time. But I mean, overall, I think that turned out really cool. So I want to try some of the patterns that I saw on that Dave's Snowflakes um, just to cut myself. And I, I guess he has PDFs on there, but you would actually print out the PDF and then cut the snowflake from what you printed out. And I don't want to do that. I'd rather um, just look at something and then get some ideas and... Um, and then cut my own. But, I mean, you can see here how I can fold this back and I can make changes to it or see, um, you know, I that's that place that I meant, I didn't mean to cut out the whole thing. I meant to just cut through but not cut a piece out. And then that would have still been connected right there. Um, you know, this one would be they kind of look like cheerleaders. Look, she's a, there's her head and there's her ponytail is bouncing up in the air. And then here's her body and she's got, um, here's her palms, her pom-poms. She's cheering out. There's her torso. And then that's her legs. She's jumping up in the air and then touching her feet back together. So this one's our cheerleader snowflake. Anyway, I hope that um, may have, Look how fun that is. I hope that was inspiring. I wish I had seen it or thought of it or done it, um, you know, a month ago because I could have been playing with these all this time. Um, more appropriate for Christmas. Oh, I've got a couple more. This one I made for my daughter out of um, mulberry paper. Here's one that I made her um, out of some patterned paper. And then I was working in my Christmas journal and I had these sitting on the table and I printed some pictures for my journal and I just did little squares, find it. So I had this little picture of my dog who went over and sat down by the fireplace and I thought, oh, it needs a frame or it needs a background or something. And then the snowflakes were sitting there and I was like, oh my goodness, I could make a frame. Oops. So this is the first one I did. Um, and it's hard to see because that's why I don't, I don't like the patterned. So this one is a fourfold, and then I just cut this, you know, 
when I had it folded, I just cut the center for the square for her. And then to make it Christmassy, I cut out some Christmas trees and stars and things like that. But I don't like this, um, I don't like this patterned paper. Here's where you can see, this is what I was talking about, how if you're gonna glue it down and you wanna get, like this piece doesn't go out into any edges. So I cut through there. There is a cut there, but then when you glue it down, it gets glued back together and you don't see it. So that was my first attempt at a frame. And then I did it out of solid paper and same sort of thing. This one, I put Christmas trees and stars and hearts. And I have this little um, cherry blossom Sakura flower punch. So I put those flower punches in there. But I, I don't know. I didn't like it as, as much as this is what I ended up putting in my book. So it's got um, kind of, it's got hearts and, oh, that's what I wanted. I wanted the Christmas trees to go straight up and down instead of at an angle. So this one, I put the Christmas trees on that side and, and just cut a little frame. And it's really easy to, um, to do a little frame like this. So here's that folded back up. So th this is the part that I put it on my picture. And so the center of the, was here, I just put the center of the um, snowflake piece on the center of my photo and marked how big I wanted my photo piece to be and then just cut the center out um, this way. So pretty fun. Um, that's what I've, something I've been up to and let me know if you give it a try. Uh, they're 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 kind of addictive. Um, like I said, I wish I had I wish I had started on it a little earlier so I could have actually made something um, out of all the snowflakes. It, it reminded me of reminds me of making um, crochet snowflakes because I oh, one year for a club that I belong to a woman's club. Um, they needed, they wanted some crochet snowflakes. Um, let me zoom out. Crochet snowflakes for a Christmas tree. They wanted to do an entire Christmas tree. I think I made like 60 different tiny um, crochet and blocked and starched um, snowflakes for that tree. So the whole tree was hand crocheted. And of course, I gave them to them, so... Um, I don't have them anymore. And I don't know if I have a picture of that tree when it was set up that year. Anyway, this was fun. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to remember to put the links um, down in the description box. And um, everyone have a Merry Christmas and I'll see you again soon in the next video. Bye.